Hi, this is Chris with Launch Code, and in this video, we're going to take our first steps towards enabling validation in our MVC application. And we're going to do this by adding uh, some annotations to the properties of our event class. So I'm in my event class right now. Uh, so uh, from the project pane, just go down to models and open up event. And there are two fields here that are ripe for validation, name and description. Right now, there's nothing preventing the user from say leaving both blank or or typing in a description that's incredibly long so we want to add some validation annotations to restrict the range of values that can be uh, used here so in the name field right above the name field i'm going to use the size annotation and notice here when i type that in i'm going to the first suggestion is going to be uh, from the javax validation.constraints package and that's what you want all of our all of our constraints all of our validation annotations are going to come from that package now with size, I can specify uh, min and max properties, or you know you can do um, one or both basically. So for the name field, I think I want to say that the minimum size of the name should be say oh three, I guess, um, and then the max we don't want them to be too long. So let's say I don't know fifty characters seems reasonable. Now on the description field, I want to do something similar. And on the description field, I'm going to allow the description to be blank, so I only want a max size, let me say 500 characters for the max size. Okay, and then there's one more thing I want to do here, which is to say that um, on the name field, I want it to be not blank. And that means that, uh, that the field has to contain some non-white space characters. In other words, someone can't put in three spaces and have a valid name. Okay, and then I'm going to add one more field to my class while I'm here and we're going to add an email field. So I'm going to make a private string contact email. This will be, say, the, the event organizer. And then I want to add the email annotation to this field, which will specify that this string should conform to the rules that dictate uh, common email formats. And I'm going to add this field both to my um, constructor, and then I'm also going to create some getters and setters. Okay, so I've added it to my constructor, and I'm going to go down to the bottom here, or eh, roughly the middle, below my description getters and setters, and I'm going to use the generate functionality to add getters and setters for the contact email. Okay, great. So, <clears throat> so what I can do now is um, go into my uh, template. Since I added a new field, I need to add a new... Um, input for that field. So I'm going to go in here and below name and description, let me put contact email. And recall that the name of the input has to match the name of the field for model binding to work properly. Okay, and so there's one more thing I can do here before I start it up is um, for each of these fields, I can add a validation message. And this message will, will be, uh, can be used, I should say, when um, the um, validation does not uh, pass for a given field. So I'm going to first add a validation message to the email annotation. So I can just add parens after add email and say message equals invalid email, try again. So this will just be a more human friendly version of uh, what would otherwise get printed out. For uh, the description, let me say that the message is going to be um, description too long. So you can add message even when you have other parameters on the annotation. And then on name, let me add a message that says name must be between, what did I say, 3 and 50 characters. Okay, so uh, that looks good. And so uh, just to reiterate, if I'm looking at my event controller, I don't need to make any updates here for the um, for the create a process create event form because we're using model binding. So that email, as long as that is in the form template itself, and as long as uh, the the model has an email property or the contact email property, this won't need to be updated. So that's a nice handy aspect of model binding. Uh, one more thing I should do before I start, I, I added my new field. Let me add that to 
the display all events view. So I'm going to go to my templates and go to templates, events, index, and I'm going to make a new column, contact email. And so I make a new header with that. And then down below, uh, within each row, I'm going to add the value of that field in the given object. I was making a TR instead of a TD. There we go. Okay, that should work. So let's start the application and see uh, see how we did. So uh, while we're waiting for this to start up, let me reiterate that adding validation to an MVC app requires work in both the model and the controller. So, so far, we've only really worked with the model. We've only added annotations to our model class. And so we'll see uh, as, as we demo here that this is not going to be sufficient to fully enable um, validation. So um, exactly what happens is we'll be demonstrated in a second. Okay, the browser, or so the app started up. Let me go to the browser, localhost, colon 8080. And I'll go to create an event. And so let me say, uh, well, the first thing I might try to do is just to just submit the form without any of these things filled out. And we'll see that um, what happened was, seemingly, I have an, a new row in my events listing. It has an ID, so there does seem to be an object there, but all the fields are blank. So apparently, none of these annotations were applied to the data there. So actually applying these annotations and checking the values of uh, the incoming data in a request is going to require some more work in the controller, and we'll take care of that next.